there's only one thing that matters when it comes to building a massive audience. So a lot of people want to become influencers nowadays. If you run a survey, you have a lot of kids that say they want to be YouTubers when they grow up. They want to become the Logan Pauls, the Gary V's of the world. They want to become the Mr. Beast and so on. So Logan Paul, for example, he started on Vine a very long time ago and he translated that over to YouTube. And then he's built kind of the platform that he has right now, which has allowed him to box people such as Floyd Mayweather. And now he's in the WWE and he has his prime drink brand where he's partnered up with another YouTuber who he also fought, KSI. And you also have Mr. Beast who has over 100 million subs on his main channel, but a lot of his other channels have over a million subs as well. Gary Vee, he's been playing the game for 13, 15 years or so. Myself, I've actually been podcasting for about 10 years or so. It's really tough sliding in the beginning. You know, I have no doubt in my mind that a Mr. Beast, because of his big audience, now that he's created Feastables, he's created Mr. Beast Burger, which does over $100 million a year. And guy is only 24 years old, right? You know, Gary Vee does over nine figures. And then Logan Paul, as an example too. I do believe all three of these people will eventually become billionaires. And so there's only one trait at the end of the day that kind of ties their success together. The one thing that really matters is that these people never gave up. They kept going. And more importantly, they stay focused. Gary V stayed focused on, hey, I'm going to be that social guy. I'm going to create content and I'm going to use the agency to kind of, you know, continue to build a platform. And then that's going to be my cash flow machine. The same with Logan Paul, right? You can even argue the liver king as well. So the liver king has built his social platform. Recently, I was just checking out a podcast where he does over $100 million a year across his businesses. And so what really matters at the very top is that you build the audience first and then you can build a business afterwards, right? If you build the audience first, you're going to have a lot more optionality and you're going to have a lot more freedom and you don't need to be at the beck and whim of anybody else. You can even use Amazon as an example. They built an audience, but they really built a platform. Facebook is a platform. Google is a platform. So once you have scale, then you can focus on doing other things. I would say my biggest mistake in the beginning was trying to do too many things before I had scale. I think oftentimes we have the formula reversed. And so with this YouTube channel as an example, a couple years ago, when I was just focused on marketing, the channel was actually growing pretty quickly. But the problem was I started to not repeat what was working well. And so you want to repeat what's working well. You want to double and triple down on what's working well and not try to jump all over the place. Because what tends to happen is people start to jump all over the place when something starts to work. You have to be consistent. You have to think long term and you can't let things get you down. You can't let setbacks cause you to give up. I mean, failure is fine. That's kind of part of the game. But each failure, like you're going to learn lessons from it. And that's how the winners look at failure. I know this one was more kind of theoretical, but if you want actual tactical tips on how you can build your audience and not only that, get more customers, drive more revenue for your business, then you can check out this video over here on how to 10x your revenues, how to 10x your traffic. This was actually an event that I spoke at. And so check it out and we'll catch you later.